Today, for our topic, I'll be talking about toxic nostalgia. And let's get into it. Now, let's look at what is toxic nostalgia. It is thinking that things used to be amazing, focusing only on the good memories and remembering the good about the past. And this has happened to me so many times. I've gotten caught up, you know, thinking about, you know, the good in people. And sometimes there's no good in a person. You know, you want to see the good, but sometimes there's no good. And you're thinking, I remember years ago, I had someone come and spend, you know, a few days with me. And I remember, you know, just before the person came, I was in some nostalgia. And then the person came and I realized even after over 20 years, that person didn't change. It was the same person. And, you know, sometimes this is it can trip us up because even when I was married, to the ex, one thing that kept me in the relationship was always remembering the good. But the good was the love bombing, and the love bombing lasted one year. One year. One year of love bombing. Actually, it lasted one year and approximately two months. And and it kept me in um it kept me in a relationship because I was thinking about the good, but truth be told, that person was not good, and I was just you know remembering the good old days. And this can be um this can be I don't even know what is the word I'm saying. This can be dangerous because toxic nostalgia will have you trapped in a relationship that is bad because you remember the good. But the good only lasts like I was the the love bombing just lasted like one year, two months, and the rest of it, you know, I was married for eleven years. It was eleven years of um tox how, how do you say that word? Well, I'm not gonna say toxicity. It was eleven years of toxic. And I just hold on to the good. And like I said, sometimes there's no good to hold on to. So you go back and you play the good, you know, the good old days. I remember in the good old days when this and that used to happen. But as I said, the the bad outweighed the good. The love bombing lasted for one year, two months. And the rest of the relationship, it was toxic. It was unhealthy. And I I remember to talking... To people and you know you say well that person you know lied to you and the person was getting upset and all and 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 all they do is talk about the good they only well this and but if we just sit on and look at our life the bad always outweighs the good in when, when you were with a, a toxic person and when you keep when you keep talking about the good in that person, that person done left you. How good could have they been when they don't break the um the um break when they don't break the marriage vows they went on with their life and you still there holding on, holding on to nothing because usually the things that you're even holding on to like me wasn't even real. I was holding on to something that wasn't even real. I was holding on to the the past that was love bombing. Love bombing is not real. I was holding on to foolishness, to foolish things I was holding on to. And this can keep us in places that we don't need to be. Now we're going to be looking at Dayton, Dayton in the Bible. We're going to be looking at numbers, number 16, verses 13. And we see in the Bible too, where Dayton, when Dayton, Abram and Korah rebelled against Moses, we see in number 16, verses 13, it said, Dayton is um, talking here. We're going to read from uh, number 16, verses 12. And Moses sent to call Dayton and Abram the sons of Elab, which said, we will not come up. It is a small thing that thou hast brought us out of the land that flowed with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except you make yourself altogether a prince over us. Now, you know, Dayton was lying because they was in Egypt. Egypt was not flowing with milk and honey. Not only was, uh, um, What's his name? Dayton was lying. Dayton was in toxic nostalgia because when they was in Egypt, they cried out to God. 
They cried out and said, God, and that's how God sent Moses to deliver them. Now they're out and, and they're fantasizing about Egypt. And he's now saying that Egypt was a land of milk. That was a lie. That was a lie. That was a lie. Egypt was, um, they, they was treated so badly in Egypt. They was treated so badly in Egypt that they cried out. Even when Moses went, uh, Pharaoh told them, "Listen, you're gonna make um, you're gonna make the bricks without the straw." And they had to go gather straw. And now that they're out, now that they're out, they're talking. Oh, we remember the things we used to. Yes, you remember they used to give you food, but how did they treat you? How did the Egyptians treat you? They, they treated you like slaves. They whipped you. They killed your children. They did. Uh, they put you in all manner of servitude. And this is what toxic nostalgia can do. Even Dayton in the Bible said, we're not going to come up because you took us from a land flowing with milk and honey. That was a lie. They was in bondage. They was in slavery. The Egyptians treated. The Bible said after, after, um, after Joseph died, they rose up a Pharaoh that didn't know nothing about Joseph. Didn't know nothing. And they was in slavery 430 years. And now that God brought them out now, oh, they're remembering. They're not remembering the slavery. They're remembering the food. Oh, remember when we used to eat the, the corn and the onion and the leeks and all these things. What about the slavery? What about them killing, telling? When Pharaoh said to the midwives, um, kill all the, the boy baby and let the girls alone live. What about that? What about the harsh treatment? And now that you're out, you're remembering the good. You see, that can be toxic. A nostalgia can be a very dangerous place to be in. And we see in the Bible where Dayton, Dayton said to Moses, it is a small thing that you brought us out of a land flowing with milk and honey. There was no milk and honey in Egypt. There was no milk and honey in Egypt. Yes, they had some food. But they had to give them some food because they was they was um laying the foundation for the Egypt. So giving them some food was the least among uh, uh, things that they could have done. And we pray that God deliver us from to toxic nostalgia. We pray that God deliver us from these mindsets where people treated us like dogs, treated us like slaves, walked over us and used us and, re and abused us. And now we're only thinking about the good in that when there was no good, there was no good. There were slaves in Egypt. The man treated you bad. The woman treated you bad. And now you're out. You're still talking about the, there was no good. That is toxic nostalgia and when you keep remembering about the good you're broken and you need God to fix you. you need God to heal you need God to heal the mind the will and the emotions and may God heal us for today from our toxic nostalgia bye